Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're watching this from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, you are most welcome to the locker room right here on Top 6 Fan TV. And it's been a fascinating weekend of action in which, uh, I mean, City take charge of the title race after Liverpool and Arsenal implode yet again. And with me in the house to check out or jump into the action is Jonah and Manzi Sly, hopefully will be joining a little later on. And uh, we'll get into talking points right after this. Mikhail Saka Anthony! Salah, what a beautiful port for the bloody eye! Oh, there goes Holland. he's on Brilliant. Welcome if you're just joining us to Top 6 Fan TV. The show is The Locker Room and Sly has conveniently also checked in. Sly, you're hey, most welcome hey. to the show. Yeah, Chelsea guys, as usual. Thousand and apologies. In a very good mood, eh? No worries, no worries, man, no worries. Jonah from Liverpool, you're most welcome. Manzi from the Red Up of Manchester. You are most welcome. And of course, I am carrying the Arsenal flag today. And a gloomy weekend for Arsenal, Liverpool, uh, mostly Arsenal and Liverpool. City are dancing all the way, uh, looking like they're dancing all the way to the title. Uh, you know, a fantastic weekend of action in which there were shockers. Shockers right there in the English Premier League, no one would have predicted. Um, and I'm sure some very lucky uh, chaps who placed them, some interesting bets have made some good money somewhere in a different corner of the world. But let's jump into the action, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I mean, we'll start with, we'll start with the, I mean, you can hear how deflated I am anyways. <laughs> you can say, is that, was that with the activity at, at, at the, the Etihad where Manchester City disposed of Luton, just tore them apart. 5-1, the final score. Uh, I mean, very interesting stuff where from, from City, goals coming in uh, from Hashi. Well, Hashioka was an own goal. Uh, from Luton, Kovacic, Haaland with the penalty there, Jeremy Doku slaloming his way past the Luton defence and slotting one in, and Josko Gvardiol continuing his fine run of form with a fantastic strike with his weaker um, right foot, uh, following that up with a great strike, of course, that we did see in the Champions League. And that set City up quite nicely for the weekend because it took them top of the table on 32 games played, um, 73 points. Um, of course, Liverpool and Arsenal did have a game in hand and uh, looked like they were starting to, um, you know, were warming up for some great matches considering they were both at home. But, you know, lo and behold, it wasn't to be. And, um, you know, we did see uh, drama unfold. First of all, at Anfield, Crystal Palace with, uh, you know, I don't even know whether to call it a, a, you know, a fantastic result or a shocking result for Liverpool. But Crystal Palace, Eberetti, Eze, scoring the only game, uh, only goal of the game. Jonah, what was your take on that? The first implosion of the day, Liverpool losing at Anfield, their second loss in a row, and only uh, you know second loss in what over over fourteen months at Anfield. Your take on the match? <clears throat> yeah, man. You know, um, coming from the Atlanta game, obviously there was that feeling like we have to bounce back, we have to show some energy and some kind of response. Uh, but again, that comes with a certain nervousness because of the stakes that, that are there. Like if it was any other season where we're not really chasing the league or anything like that, if it was somewhere early in the season, 
um, maybe the tension wouldn't have been as much, but I think it was there, at least for the fans. The players, mm-hmm. I don't think they had it, man. Those guys were casual the whole, like the whole half, first half, second half, maybe they showed up a bit, but first half, they were so casual. It's like they didn't know what's going on. I don't know what kind of hangover they're on, but it was very annoying to watch. <laughs> and once that goal went in, Liverpool of about, like we were saying uh, uh, before we went on air, Liverpool of about three weeks ago, one goal behind, we're like, it's okay, this always happens. We will win 3-1. But this time, there was that tension. You could just feel it like, ah, will we get a goal? Pressure. The pressure, yeah. the nerves. And, the and, and, nerves. And, and, yeah. It's not nerves, it's just that, you know, that sinking feeling of maybe this is, like we have chosen the wrong time to dip in form. Every t- every team kind mm-hmm. of gets that at some point in the season. We have just chosen at the wrong time to to get that. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Manzi. Uh, an outsider's the view on the game. Obviously, um, Manchester United. You you you've, you've gone through this quite a number of times in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Handling title yeah. challenges. <laughs> Please allow me to uh, emphasize that. Uh, you know, <clears throat> you'd have to travel back in time to the quantum realm to get back to a time <laughs> uh, United were challenging for the title. But I mean, you've, you've been part of these title charges once for United. Did Liverpool crack under pressure? Um, <clears throat> my analysis will not be very different from Jonas. I think um, that Liverpool... Hey, Klopp said he was dead. <laughs> ah, football can kill you, can kill you a real, a real death. Real even, death. Even, the, even the team is dead. As in, from that United game to Atlanta to this weekend, there's a lack of uh, intensity. That they, they are, I don't know if it's mental tiredness or it's physical tiredness. I don't know if the games are many. Like Jonas said, it's a time where they have fallen in, they are dipping in form, but it's it's a shame. As in losing to Atalanta, that one was a big, big shame. Now, Crystal Palace on the weekend, especially where, you know, it's a three-horse race. I, I don't know, it must be sad to, to be a Liverpool fan at the moment. Um, and there is a loss where you see guys who are working hard, and then there's a loss where... Even you're like, man, I don't see anyone who's going to score for us. So I think that that game was like that. Man, it was so terrible. Sly, your take on the game, man. What does this mean for uh, for Liverpool? Are they out? You could see some um, <clears throat> despondent faces right there. Um, you know, in in on, on the pitch at the at the end of the of the whistle, and uh, not looking good. Not looking good at all for. Um, uh, for Liverpool, what was your take? Are they out of the of the title race? Yo, Sly, you're on mute. Look, yeah, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, even from like um, the, the last week's show, I was saying, you guys, you know, there's there's multiple races taking place right now. Beyond, if we go from bottom to top, which I am sure you guys would appreciate as a Chelsea fan, I'm choosing to do as opposed to top to bottom. Um, you've got your relegation, uh, your relegation race going on. You've got your top, your 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 kind of European race going on, and then there's you know kind of like the top of the league race kind of going on in terms of the top three. I don't think they're out of it. I think it's been disappointing hearing a lot of Arsenal as well as Liverpool fans just kind of. Saying, oh, you know what? They've got easy fixtures in terms of City, and they've won it, and it's theirs to lose, and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, there is still six games to go, you know, and there's 18 points to play for. And um, the same way it was so unexpected for Arsenal. Okay, maybe not the Arsenal. Like it was unexpected for both the teams to have lost the, in the manner in which they've lost. It also means that the opposite can also happen. You know, you just gotta you gotta keep the faith and trust the process, so to speak, because it's I don't think it's out. And I think it was Jose that said it like a long time ago. It was like until 
it's mathematically impossible. You should always just kind of keep the faith and just keep pushing on. So for me, they're not out of the race. Um, out of the three, they are my preferred team to win it as opposed to anyone else. And um, I think that, you know, they, 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 they need to just kind of, they need to push through this kind of sound barrier. And I mean, like, look, they've been playing rock and roll football for so long, and that's the only way they know how to play, so to speak. But yeah, it looks like we lost. Uh, looks like yeah, yeah, it's like we're losing you. But um, I guess you'll be back soon with that connection yeah but um we we could we i think we we we, we cut your drift slide um you know liverpool you're still regarding them as favorites despite this uh, blip jonah very quick one do you agree with that assessment at uh, liverpool still i certainly feel i mean uh, as an arsenal fan and we'll, we'll just we'll get into the beloved the arsenal um whose canon i think uh somehow flipped and shot direction of the emirates instead of villa <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I mean, Jonah, your, your take on that. Do you still believe, let's hear it from a Liverpool fan. I certainly yeah. believe that. If, if yeah, City yeah, yeah. drop points, I think <clears throat> Liverpool are best placed to drop the title. Arsenal still, I mean... Uh, nah, Matthew, you're, 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 those are mind games, man. You've been saying that all season. Yeah, only, man. You're been, all, all season, you keep saying, oh, you're not in the thing. All even season, when, the whole year, with Matthew. Even, Piers, even like, when they were on top, back. eh? Even when they were top, he says, ah, oh, man, we're... Uh, we're, we're yeah, I'm being yeah, pragmatic, man. <laughs> I know this Great, game. Even with the, league, the game may be like, I, I don't know how we won it. I think yeah. City should have won it. He, he has like a fake humble card he's playing, eh? But but you see, it's coming to fruition. I told you guys of the uh, of the games that Arsenal has to play against Villa, Spurs, um, uh, Villa, Spurs, Chelsea, and United. Those four, Arsenal is going to drop some points there. I just didn't expect, uh, in, being humble and honest, I didn't expect that it was going to be in this manner, the manner that it was. <laughs> <laughs> against Aston Villa, a draw. I would have taken it's a draw. So sad, but it's, it's so funny. Yeah. Mazi, ah, man, it was what, yeah. what, 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 why, why, why are you so? Why are you guys just making it out like it's Villa? Or... It's an insurance policy. You want like if they fail, you'll be like, I told you guys, man, we already knew. And if yeah. they win, you'll be like, oh, I'm surprised. And he's been doing exactly. the whole season. We we have, oh. we have found you, out, Matthew. We 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 know. The Let trick, me tell man. you. No, we are analysts, and that is why we are not surprised. As I, I like to call. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> All I know is that right about now, no, it's like, Chelsea hey, Everton. Did you? Right about now, Chelsea uh, yeah, Everton uh, is getting a little uh, chilly on him. Uh, yeah, man. Hey, hey, hey. So, so Sly, we're man, going I should to have captain him. We're going to preview. We're going to preview season friendlies in the you know in the summer break. So Everton versus Chelsea. Uh, just hang on, my brother. Just hang on. That is the preseason warm up. We will get to you. We'll get to you. <laughs> I just but like that game has it started. You know, I just wanted to give a real time <laughs> update of what's going on. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 yeah, 22 yeah, minutes yeah. in. You know, we're 2 0 up. Ah, Palmer. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. On. I mean, yeah, it's on. No, no, no. Thank, thanks, Sly. Thanks for that update. Yeah, you never know, Paul Palmer is on another level. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 it's, uh, Everton. Ever, I mean, uh, those Everton Chelsea guys, game. and then they will wake up on us. Yeah, Everton, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's when they will decide to be serious. Uh, I don't know, Luton, man, Luton. I don't, I don't think the injury list Luton has is what's killing him. Otherwise, they're decent. Wait, that. But anyway, only Watkins goal. Too bad. Ah, um, man, Watkins, man. Only Watkins is on fire this season. He's gone under the radar. Sly, would you take Oli Watkins at Chelsea? Because, I mean, he's in double figures for goals and assists in the Premier League, man. Matthew, those guys have like 200 players. So why would he play? <laughs> Most. They, 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 they. <laughs> My guy, I think you'll play on the technical bench because yeah, really, uh, what do you have to say? <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? He's having a person. But I think, I think it's it's 
if anything, it's Villa that's having a brilliant season. You know, it's 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 like even if you look at Newcastle in terms of yeah, you can say oh, would you take their number nine? But it's like they they have a very cohesive squad. You know, and um, I think that uh, Emre, good evening everybody, has done a brilliant job over uh, there. Man, yeah. And um, yeah, it's 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 very much to be admired. You know, and uh, good evening. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, Arsenal is right. not down to the fact that you know it's it's you have to know when to play dirty. You know, last week we were talking a couple of weeks ago, Matthew, we were talking about it, and I, I brought reference towards you know when we were having those those early days of Jose when we we're being very defensive, and Arsenal fans were talking about the fact that you know. It's, it's football. It's about attacking. It's about going out there and scoring goals. But to win the league, you have you also have to know when you are tired. You know, you also have to know mm. when you know you you put out a lineup to win the game, as opposed to put out a lineup to showcase yourself. And I think Arteta right now he's still in his infancy with regards to that aspect of management that. He wants to go in and do a pep and almost like just constantly dominate, dominate, dominate. But like when it's like, you know, speaky bum time, as you like to call it, you have to be able to say, you know what? We're playing the guys that are in fourth. Uh, and, um, you know, we have to act accordingly. They're not fourth 32 games or 31 games into the season for no reason. They're there for a reason. They've they've earned their spot there, and you have to put your line up and put forth your gameplay accordingly. You don't just come at them the same way you would have come at them because they've got nothing to lose. You know, mm -hmm. Villa finishes yeah. fourth for them. That's champs league for them. That's he's achieved. He's overachieved. You know, they're so uh, huh? I think the area the the error really sits on um, on, uh, on on. on on Arteta's shoulders. But but uh, 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 let me bring in uh, Jonah here first before I bring Manti back in. Or the Arsenal one. Um, some some fans, including myself, you know, have attributed this to uh, either the tinkering that is to the whole Champions League scenario, right? They, they just come off um, a tough game with Bayern midweek. Um, you could argue Aston Villa also you know came off uh, a europa league game you know on thursday they had they actually had a day less of rest um than arsenal but with the second leg in sight obviously it's finally poised due to uh, arsenal have to go back to have to go to germany to their lands uh, allianz arena where they've lost cup you know a few times um in the recent past uh, or rather the decade that has gone by um has, has not been a great place did that play a factor in, in Mikel Arteta's rotation because throwing Kai Havertz back into the midfield position that was the cause for their poor form just before they went for that you know international break and and and, and uh uh and rejuvenation period in Dubai and, and you know the same old problems crept up um uh, Kai Havertz in midfield and, and so you know Midfield control was was an issue. Zinchenko was being Zinchenko at left back. Um, you know his overloading of the midfield did not work according to plan this time. Um, the subs coming on, you know, there's just there's just a lot of nervousness I feel about the Arsenal that, um, for my view, I attribute to a lack of experience in this kind of position, being in in between, you know, sandwiched in between very tough two fixtures of the Champions League, which I've not experienced for the last seven or eight years. And I also did mention if they somehow manage to get past by, it will be the same against Real Madrid or City. There will be that kind of tension and Arsenal will inevitably be susceptible to dropping points, especially for the match preceding either the first leg or the match in between the first and second leg of that semi should Arsenal progress. So I think for me, teething issues for the Arsenal, uh, it will be another season of learning for them. But Jonah, what was your take? Do you agree with that assessment? Um, I think what you've said still ties into, into what Sly was saying. 
like the inexperience like tinkering mm. comes from inexperience you know like you you see a certain game but you're thinking about another game so you 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 kind of it's not that you don't take this game seriously i think every coach takes every game seriously but you kind of prepare poorly for this game because you're thinking of another game while uh, uh let's just use jose because that's who slide mentioned while uh, jose for example would come and say you know what i have to think about champions league let me rest some players but the team he would pick wouldn't be disrespectful to aston villa it would be the kind of team of mm. okay, for one nil like i'm going to just come we just sit here and we measure ourselves until someone just gets a final blow it seems unheard of in the modern day because probably every coach and there's someone uh, i think it's schweinsteiger who mentioned it in some interview recently he said every coach is trying to be no it wasn't schweinsteiger it was sam allardyce he said every young coach today is trying to be pep instead of just trying mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. them and he praised uh, thomas frank of brentford he said thomas frank is his own is his own guy he has his own style but almost every other young coach you can almost see them trying to emulate pep in some way and yet mm -hmm. pep is pep he has always been like that but these other guys are kind of losing identity or not creating their own identity rather because they're trying to be pep and pep's thing like sly said is to just come on every game and blow you away blow you away with possession blow you away with chances created yet sometimes sometimes you have to allow and say you know what let's sit back which is kind of uh, one of my frustrations with Klopp as well he's a bit adamant to sticking to one style of play and not trying to adapt other styles depending on the game yeah manzi final take on the title race between uh, is it all lost um or do uh do arsenal and liverpool have a chance and if city do draw points uh who would capitalize who would capitalize matthew um have no fear um arsenal will win the league uh, just be confident. <laughs> I know you're afraid <laughs> and you're worried. He's <laughs> playing with you. <laughs> uh, City will drop points, Liverpool will drop points, but Arsenal. Yeah, you guys will go on to win the league. Um, <laughs> Emma Man, you sound like Terry said. Yeah, Emma Sam memes from yesterday. I can't say. <laughs> Then Jacob should go and fight in the war, man. <laughs> I keep him. <laughs> should release, <laughs> should release him, and he yeah, goes and fights for his country. Uh, but uh, I think yeah. for for Champs League, just chill it, just lose to Bayern, come back, concentrate on the Premier League. Champs League will be for next season, but you, they, it's there's still hope. Um, like Jonas said, unless it's mathematically impossible, where you are now, you're in touching distance. Of, uh, uh, of the yeah, do you know what touching distance is when City is ahead of you, man? That's like no, touching no. distance when you're on crutches, man. Man, I didn't say it's mathematically impossible. I didn't say it's mathematically impossible. Mathematically, no, mathematically, all the three can still win it. Yeah, no, I said they should not give up unless oh. it is mathematically impossible. They should keep, oh, keep working on it. My guy, Liver, you, man, you guy, I'm so, I'm so deflated, but uh, I, I expected this, but not this hard. As the, as, <laughs> and to what you say, what, what goes up must come down. But boys, the way, the degree, the amount <laughs> but of the with, 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 with the which thing about down, Arsenal losses are the memes, you guy. We have waited for some time to get this. It's been a while. You guys have been over. With. The memes are world class. They, they Yo, don't we with we the have to are. really enjoy this moment. These guys have been <laughs> winning for so long, man. We're going to blame like, you. Man. We're uh, going to like. It's going to be the longest time. You game is what Wednesday. It's going to be the longest Wednesday. time. And should should you somehow jump out of the champ? It's like if Bayern removes you, my God, we're going to finish you. Me, I'm, and I'm, you I'm back removing back. the. <laughs> I'm removing the cobwebs from my Photoshop. Eh? I am too yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see. I can see what the lack of hope that Jonah <laughs> has been infected by by what Chelsea fans and United fans are going through. You can see Sly and Manzi are just. It's like it's like they're watching. You know, just enjoying. They're now neutrals eh? at this time of the season. 
Uh, anyway, let's move on, ladies and gentlemen, very quickly to the other matches of the day. The race for the top four, obviously Aston Villa with that fantastic win at the Emirates, that takes them three points above uh, uh, Tottenham. Tottenham still have a game in hand, but, um, you know, they lost, um, they lost their game away uh, at St. James Park to Newcastle. And it wasn't just a simple loss. It was a 4 0 mauling. Alexander Isak tearing that uh, once imperious Newcastle, uh, sorry, Spurs defense uh, to shreds. Mickey van der Ven was, uh, I mean, uh, Isak, Isak was taking the Mickey out of Mickey van der Ven. It was really. Uh, it's really, it's really quite, quite crazy of a, of, of a game. Um, I mean, Sly, would you take Alexander Isak at Chelsea if he was available in the summer, which, which it seems he is? You're on mute, man. You're on mute. He's a, he's a brilliant player. Like he's finishing. Is, is 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 really cool he's very composed in front of um in front of goal and of course like you know premier league proven so to speak um and i think he would be if he had i would have because like, like right now his price tag just keeps going up like season by season right, and season by right, season right, and you know he's he's one of these guys that he's a traditional number nine you know um there was a there was a podcast I was watching recently. I think you shared it actually, Matthew, with uh, Les Ferdinand, and they were talking about the the death of the number nine, you know, and how has that transpired? And uh, I think Les Ferdinand's view was he put it on Ronaldo and Messi's shoulders in terms of the young players that were coming up. They wanted to be more attacking midfielders as opposed to be, you know, your Alan Shearers and and uh, of, of of this world. And um, I think he is more of a traditional number nine, uh, doesn't really need to drop out. But when that moment comes, he does kind of strike and, and, and make it happen. And he tore apart Spurs, tore apart Spurs, sorry. But um, Spurs also crumbled a bit. There was a bit of a shell shock in that game. You know, those two goals yeah, came yeah, very yeah. early on. And it was just kind of like, yo, by the time Spurs were settling, these guys were gunning for their fourth. You know, for that yeah, third, sorry. And, so, and, and, and it's like, sorry, sorry for interrupting, but uh, we 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 we're definitely running out of time. So we need to bring in some of the comments from uh, the virtual audience. Uh, comment coming in from Terry Mamosa saying, "Thanks for this, but I'm seeing at this moment it's hard for us to win uh, the trophy." Um, yes, I agree, definitely. Fiona Joyo says, "Lord, Arsenal made my weekend." It is really squeaky bum time. Uh, Fiona Joyo there. Uh, Fiona Joyo. Okay. Uh, anyways, guys, the elephant committed suicide. I think this is one of my... <laughs> Manzi will enjoy this one. <laughs> As you can see, he's just dying. Manzi, the elephant committed suicide. But I, even me, it's hard for me to argue against that one. Yeah, the real was a real death. That is it. Football can kill you. It was a real death. Yeah. And finally, now comment coming in from Tara Momos saying, as you see Man City fixtures, Arsenal is in danger. Of course, alluding to the fact that uh, City's fixtures, um, you know, it doesn't see City losing any of those fixtures, um, you know, towards the end. And actually, sorry about that. Let me just quickly run through um, those those remaining fixtures. So City's remaining yeah, fixtures in the league about how like you know towards this squeaky bum time in the season it's not it's 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 so you have to be these these tasmanian devils these 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 smaller clubs that are fighting for relegation these smaller clubs that are fighting for positioning those are guys you should be really wary of as well because they've got nothing to lose you know what i mean I hear they're you. throwing in so, so slight so slight with that in mind there is, you know, uh, City have what maybe one of those in their run. They have these are their remaining Premier League games, right? They have Brighton yeah. uh, away. They have Nottingham Forest away at the City Ground. They have Wolves at home. They have Fulham away. Uh, Fulham have been a little bit tricky, and then they have Spurs away. 
we're not sure what Spurs will show up. And then their final game is at home to West Ham. We expect them to dispatch all those quite promptly. For Liverpool, their final Premier League matches, they are away to Fulham in the next one after Atalanta. Uh, they have the Merseyside Derby next. And that's, uh, you see, Everton are going to be fighting against relegation. Then they go away to West Ham. Then they host Spurs. Immediately after Spurs, Liverpool go away to Aston Villa. And then they close their season with a home game against Wolves. Um, looking at Liverpool's fixtures now, actually, they, they seem quite yeah, tricky, yeah. actually. Um, and then Arsenal's games. Arsenal's games, um, his last games of the, of the Premier League season. They are away to Wolves in their next game. Then they welcome Chelsea to the Emirates, a deflated Emirates, I should say. After which, they go away to uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to play Spurs. And then they'll come back to the Emirates uh, for a tricky tie against Bournemouth, who visit Arsenal. And then after that, they have to go away to Old Trafford to play Manchester United before they go to their last game against Everton, who, again, will be fighting against relegation. Arsenal has, like, <laughs> out of these games, they have, like, four or five banana skins in there. I don't see Arsenal um, winning all these games. I expect them to actually finish third after looking at this again. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's quite crazy. So, um, supporting another comment coming in here from Esgard Fungo, Manchester United fan. Shout out, Esgard. How is TZ doing? Dar es Salaam. Good job, brothers. I like I like that. Um, thank you for that comment. Uh, great coming in and uh, moving on from um, <clears throat> uh, from Newcastle and Spurs to Manchester's beloved Manchester United. Who, lest we forget, did not did not also cover themselves in glory over the weekend. Two two draw there. A pair of goals from Bruno uh, Fernandes. Uh, but the key talking points, of course, disappointed that they dropped points within the time. Uh, to seven, two games played. Newcastle going above them on goal difference uh, with the same number of games played, but 17, uh, plus 17 on goal difference. Man United at minus one goal difference. And also two points ahead of West Ham. Yes, like, go ahead. I have to bring in the man. Just telling my last comment. You say, you're saying, go ahead, Slide. Manzi, we're coming for them. Man. Uh, <laughs> ah, speaking of, yeah, speaking of, very, by the way, Manzi. Chelsea, that is not very, Chelsea, very... They what? Yeah? Go ahead. Chelsea, I'm what? Saying, I'll, I'll pull you in, Manzi. Chelsea are, um, are in ninth place, right? Man United in seventh place. Chelsea are ninth place. 31 games played. So they have a game in hand over Manchester United. Are on 47 points. If they win that game in hand, they're level on points with Manchester United, but will go ahead Manchester United on goal difference. So uh, I remember what you said, Manzi, just uh, a few weeks ago. You said, I, I repeat, Manzi, and I bring you to re react to this. Jonah, you remember it's, this was the man. Man United is too fake. Man United is poor, but Chelsea is like poverty. Chelsea is too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, um, I bring you in, sir. I, 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 stand by those, I stand by those comments. Um, the, the, both teams are rubbish, both teams are poor. <laughs> it's just that one is more rubbish than the other. Uh, but Which the way Chelsea think? is playing, man, Chelsea might catch us by the way. It's a real threat, they, actually. Yeah. There's a real opportunity for Chelsea to finish above United. United mm. continues to remain poor. So one win in, I think, eight or one win in seven. Even this car game, this car win, they helped us and gave us a penalty. Not that they helped us, but like there's no convincing style of play or convincing. You can't go into a United, apart from Chris, <laughs> you can't go into a United <laughs> game thinking you're going to win. It's actually when you win, you're like, hey, so the win is the shock, the draw, the draw isn't a shock. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, Manzi, please be strong, my brother. 
as Chris would say, back like 99, we're back like you never Kobe man, you know, touches the ball and turns around. Chris is like, we're back like 99. Man, I need to check Chris for mental health <laughs> challenges. He might be having mental health issues. <laughs> check him into Butabika. Ah, no, he's just, he's just a wonderfully passionate United fan. Although annoying when it comes to reviewing, uh, you know, Arsenal and Liverpool's games. But fantastic, fantastic round of action. And we have to leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. If you've just tuned in, you have been watching The Locker Room. You can catch up with the show again on YouTube. You can play back, catch up with the show. Thank you for all those who have uh, tuned in and um, for all those who have actually dropped some comments. Moses, Joyo, Ivan Kwesi, Edgar Fungo. Thank you very, very much. And uh, we'll have to leave it at that. It's been real, gentlemen and ladies. The Chelsea game is ongoing against Everton at the moment, and the score right now is 3 0. Chelsea leading 3 0. Cole Palmer hat trick. That is another gem in addition to Phil Forden that has taken the season by storm. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, and hopefully with another fantastic story to tell. Um, you have a lovely weekend. We'll end with this comment here from Ivan Kwesi saying the Arsenal Villa game felt like an unsolicited meeting called for by a Ugandan politician in the guise of hard work, only to be confronted by the locals and is forced to hand over to Man City. <laughs> Very interesting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I believe I, I think just uh, another quick update, Matthew. I believe um, you can check the scores to kind of update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have already, Sly, Sly, Chelsea fan, I know you're excited. We have already updated. <clears throat> Paul Palmer hat trick. Um, you're most welcome, Sly. And have a good evening. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good evening, Matthew. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> to everyone. Cheers, guys. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, bye-bye.